one. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the pressurization system to the H60. It actually is a pressurization system you see on many small aircraft. It's very similar to the pressurization system you see on very, very large jets, but there's a couple extra little quirks, and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at those today. Let's get started. So first things first, though, when you climb on board this one, uh, you'll probably notice that uh, this aircraft is capable of extremely high altitude. And by high altitude, of course, I'm referring to things on orders of, uh, you know, 20,000, 28,000 feet, which is really a tremendous amount of altitude that you're capable of achieving in this particular plane. Now, if we hope to actually be able to get to altitudes like that, we need to be thinking about how we're going to be able to breathe. Now, one of the cool things they provide us on this particular aircraft here over on the side is they give us a little oxygen supply that we can actually just crank this little knob here and uh, breathe deep, so to speak, and we have very, very little as far as that is concerned. Now, the other problem, of course, we have is um, we don't want to always just be standing on this because uh, we're going to chew through our oxygen supply very quickly if we have a lot of passengers. Instead, what we want to do is puff the plane up with a bunch of air that's basically going to be at a higher pressure than the air around the airplane. So let's go down here and uh, take a look. You can see it's a very turbulent day here. So it makes things a little bit bumpier than usual, but nothing too, too bad. So we have a bunch of different options for our pressurization system on board this particular aircraft. Uh, keep in mind, other aircraft like this have basically the same general system. What you have here is you have the current climb and as well as descent of the cabin itself. Your middle needle allows you to go ahead and select what your pressure goal is. Right now you can see it's at 1,000 feet, which would be the equivalent at max pressure of around uh, about 11,250 feet here. This knob down here is going to control how fast you allow the cabin to pressurize. And of course, over on this side, this is going to give you your pressure differential, which is a really, really important point. Now, one of the things you notice here is this long needle tells us how high our cabin is. This small needle tells us the pressure ratio between the air in here and the pressure outside the window. Now there's something really, really important you have to remember. The pressure outside of this aircraft can never exceed the pressure inside the aircraft. So if you're in a situation where I'm like, hey, I'm just going to set the controller and forget about it, your inner plane will actually descend at the same rate as the plane, which can be very uncomfortable for passengers if you have a very high rate of descent. The final switch, of course, is your pressurization mode. Uh, right now, I currently have it set to dump. Now, one of the nice things about this aircraft, um, which I like that the developers did here, is they provide us with a handy little tablet that actually allows us to kind of see a little bit about what's going on here. And you can actually see here, we have two different valves responsible for pressurization. We have the safety valve, which automatically pops to basically prevent us from getting too puffed up in here. And of course, we have the outflow valve. By adjusting the pressure and the, outflow, uh, the position of the outflow valve, we can control how much air is left in here. Now, our turbochargers for our two huge engines here basically force a bunch of air into the cabin. And that's what we're actually going to be blowing out the back constantly. By pinching this a little bit, we basically allow this thing to puff up with pressure. So let's go ahead and uh, play around with this a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pressurize the cabin, and I'm going to pressurize it for C level. So I'm going to go crank this thing down to a C level here. It can actually go below C level, which I think is kind of fun. And uh, you'll see a couple different things happen when I go ahead and do this. The first thing that you're going to notice is this little outflow valve is going to automatically start to close itself. When it closes itself, it's going to trap the air that we're pushing into it inside the airplane. The other thing you're going to observe is you're going to see down here that our cabin is actually descending even though our aircraft is maintaining the same altitude. The final thing you're going to observe here is you're actually going to watch the cabin altitude back up as the differential pressure, that's again, remember the pressure between us inside and the pressure outside, is going to slowly hike towards this red line. Now we're not at 10,000 feet right now, so this is a relatively gentle process that we basically got going on right now. I just want to take a look at my engine setting. Yeah, everything's fine. So uh, one of the things you have to keep in mind is we have a maximum limit to how much pressure we can trap in here. And they actually give you a little diagram on the outside to give you an idea of that. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and grab my airplane and I'm going to drag it upwards a little bit. Ah, there we go. And what you'll observe here is the aircraft is now right around 10,000 feet. We're finishing up our little descent here. And you can see that our differential pressure is spiking because we're basically trying to force the cabin to maintain a low cabin altitude. Now, one of the cool features you have is this little knob here that controls how fast the cabin can change in pressure. You'll notice if I crank this up to maximum here, you'll see that our cabin is very rapidly uh, de -cell basically descending, which is, of course, causing our differential pressure to spike. Now, if I were to sit here and crank on this thing and I drag it all the way basically to like two, 300 feet per minute, it's going to have a very, very, very gentle decrease. Now, of course, you're sitting here going, OK, this is making pretty much sense. I kind of understand where we're going. I, like, I get the concept, but how do we actually use it in practice? Well, in practice, generally, when you're on your way up, you need to make sure two things. First of all, that you select your goal. And usually, your cabin pressure goal is going to be about 1,000 feet above your actual targeted altitude. The second thing is you have to manage your climb of your cabin 
so that your aircraft does not go flying into the red here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this trap down here. I'm actually going to increase the rate here. I'm going to crank this up for demonstration purposes. Let's really let it build up some pressure. And again, the pressure inside this cabin is actually increasing, which is causing our descent rate to increase. Now, this is where things are going to start to get interesting. So our cabin altitude, that's again, the relative altitude versus sea level inside our plane here is almost down to zero feet, which is pretty comfortable. But again, we've gone ahead and cranked that sucker up. And now you can see very, very, very clearly that we're just about on the edge of our maximum capability in here. Now, if I did something really stupid like this and basically said, I want to make this thing at minus 1000 feet above sea level, below sea level, I didn't even say above, my bad. It won't even be able to do that. As a matter of fact, you're watching very closely here that my little handy dandy needle here that tells us is about to go slamming into the red in a few moments because we're asking it to put more pressure inside here than we're actually allowed to use. Now, if you're on the other version of this plane where you have the big turbines, uh, the turbine, you actually get a little enunciator that will pop on that will scream at you to let you know that something's gone wrong. Now, what's going to happen in a few moments, you see how we're at 4.8 PSI, is this safety valve is going to come popping now. And now you can see the outflow valve is basically at maximum. So it's letting all our nice hot air from inside the cabin right out the back right now, which is a kind of unfortunate because we're exceeding our maximum internal pressure. So you can actually see there that we're pretty puffed up. And again, that's not good for us. This is blasting all that extra pressure. If we really overdo this too much, it'll basically open up the safety valve and not protect us from damaging the airplane. Again, your windows will pop out, which would be pretty bad for us. And you can probably imagine how dangerous that would be, of course, for passengers and things like that. So what we normally do uh, when we're flying this one, and we'll go ahead and uh, crank up this thing just a little bit here. We'll go ahead and close the pressure rate, and I'll reduce it quite substantially here. Again, just cranking it basically closed. Is we're going to go ahead and pick a target altitude. Let's say we're going up to uh, 25,000 feet today. Go ahead and crank this thing. And what you'll notice here is, of course, the cabin is quickly uh, reducing its altitude because it's letting all that air inside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just like 26,000, which gives us a cabin altitude of uh, yeah, about 11,000, about 10,750. We're going to go ahead and order up a climb. Time here and again we're going up to 25,000 today let's go ahead and uh, push my uh, shut, which is attitude mode give it a couple taps and let's go bring in a little bit of power here because uh, we're gonna need a little bit more than what we have right now for climb there we go go ahead and get this thing going we'll do about 40 inches which should be plenty there we go tap open the cow flaps a little bit as well and we're gonna reduce our rpm here because we don't need that much about 2750 is max continuous on this plane so that should get us going fantastic so now what's gonna happen here is a bunch of things all at the same time one, you're going to notice that my cabin is now climbing, and you're also going to observe the fact that my cabin altitude is increasing. Now, you as a pilot have to remember, whatever your vertical speed is, your cabin climb rate has to be proportional to it. So right now, we're climbing at about 600 feet per minute, and our cabin is climbing at 600 feet per minute. Super. You'll never have a problem with that. But if for whatever reason, I crank this down a little bit tighter, let's say I want to climb the cabin about 200 feet per minute, what will happen is we will out climb the capability of this to not overload our cabin. Basically, what will happen is if we watch this over time, this needle will continue hiking to the left and we'd overpressurize the cabin. And of course, the safety valve will open up and there goes all of our hot air out the back as well. That hot air is expensive. You know, we work really, really hard to collect that hot air and now we're losing it. As a matter of fact, speaking of hot air here, we can actually pull this out just to get us a little bit warmer inside here. <laughs> it's just that cold kind of a thing. And again, you can see that we're not keeping up with our climb. And just like that, we go smacking into the red line. So of course, we need to figure out a way to balance these two factors out. Uh, generally, what I do is I recommend using a climb that's no more than double your vertical speed, or no less than double your vertical speed. So right now, our vertical speed is 500 feet per minute. We could use a climb of any 500 feet per minute would be the minimum. We could actually go less than that, because remember, we're going up to 11,000 cabin with 26,000. So again, if you want to really, really get fancy, you could go ahead and bust out your favorite calculator real quick. And I use your calculator. You can say we're doing 25,000 feet, and we want a cabin altitude of 11,000 feet. That's 0.27 to right there. So you'd have the ability to actually work out that ratio directly if that's something you want to be extremely precise for. Generally for me, I find it easier just to kind of tune it as I go. Like I said, I'm doing about 700 feet here and I'm basically at the limit. So I can actually close this up just a little bit. We'll go to like 500. Again, 500 is going to be pretty good. One over two is about 0.5. Yeah, so we could probably do like 350 feet per minute if we had to. But this should keep us safely out of that nasty green bit, because of uh, red bit rather, because uh, that would be very, very, very bad for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow us to uh, get a little bit of altitude here. It's going to take a few moments. Ah, there we go. So now that we've got ourselves uh, 25,000 feet here, and now we've allowed our cabin pressure to actually stabilize, you can see it's done a pretty nice job of it. One of the biggest challenges people face uh, when dealing with pressurization, especially if you're doing a very, very high performance plane, is actually descent more so than ascent, because basically you want to be either two different strategies. The first strategy is 
don't touch this knob at all. If you don't touch that knob, then once the pressure inside the cabin becomes uh, greater or less than the stuff from outside the cabin, the two cabin pressures will actually, the uh, pressures rather, will actually neutralize each other out, so you won't have to deal with that. Downside, you're going to be getting whatever the descent rate over here is on this needle, which is going to be tremendously uncomfortable for your passengers. So we need to find a way to descend without blowing everybody's ears out. Now there's kind of a, I sort of call it the cheating way, and then there's kind of the I got to do the math way. And I'm going to demonstrate you the cheating way first, because it's just simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my new desired altitude. I want to drop down to uh, 2,000 feet here. Everything's looking uh, pretty good here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut off my altitude hold mode here. I'm going to switch to attitude hold. We're going to go ahead and pitch down uh, pretty aggressively. Again, this plane is a great plane. It really allows us to kind of cheat just a a little bit here and I get plenty of stuff here. So what I'm noticing is I'm getting about, uh, well, let's actually pitch up a little bit more. That's a pretty aggressive descent there. Eh, that's too much, too much. I'm gonna get about 2,000 feet per minute, which is gonna be pretty good for us. There we are, 2,000 feet per minute. So what I notice here is I am very rapidly getting close to my differential pressure. It's actually going to be pretty messy here. So what, what's gonna happen is my differential pressure is now winding down because the ratio of the internal cabin to the external cabin is going down because we are descending. So what I want to do is I want to be able to dial this down to sea level and be able to slowly depressurize the plane. I don't want to just kind of crank on it. So what I will do here is actually, well, I'm going to crank this thing all the way down to my desired altitude for a landing here. And usually you do about a thousand feet, and you're going to depressurize the plane anyway. So what I've done here is now we're going to fiddle with the rate control until we get it to the point where this needle no longer changes direction. So right now, like I said, we're descending about, uh, we're moving pretty quick. It's about 2,000 feet per minute. Now my brain doing quick math here tells me 2,000 divided by 2.2 is gonna be you know, pretty good. It's like 1,900 or something like that. Actually, even better, I can do the math. Divided by 2.2, it says 909. So we need 900 feet per minute to stop this needle from going up. So what we need to do is we need to decide, do we wanna to try to play this game over here or do we wanna to try to uh, adjust it here? Because right now I'm looking at my differential pressure and it's staying more or less constant. And actually you can see that pretty clearly here. This is good news for us because if that differential pressure keeps coming down it means we can actually come over here and close up that pressure depressurization haha <laughs> technical term right if i actually go close it even more the internal cabin is only losing about 300 feet per minute but if i reduce this remember if i bring this rate down differential pressure comes up if i bring my rate up the differential pressure goes down so if i want to be really really goofy here i could come up here and do something like set that really 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 low like that and what that will do of course is that will make us a very very rapidly a basically a climb so it's a kind of one of those interesting or descent rather as far as the internal pressure goes but remember this thing's going to come down fast so uh, once you look away from it uh, next thing you know like i can see you look right up here we're already up in the red there so i'm actually going to do a gentle reduction of power here because we don't need to be going quite that hard and again you have to be very careful with this plane we'll go ahead and close up on the cow flaps and everything to kind of change that so again i'm going to keep an eye on the differential pressure if i see it starting to hike up it means i need to increase my descent if i see it stay steady i found just the right amount so let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, magic here and do some alternate tango and enjoy my little descent here. So now that we're going down so darn quickly, we can actually start to kind of plan ahead. So what I notice is I want to increase my cabin descent rate a little bit here. And we're just going to enjoy that for a few moments there. See, we're about 16,000 feet. Again, we have plenty of time. Uh, we're moving on really, really quick as far as our descent rate goes. That looks pretty solid to me. And you can see these two needles are now kind of catching up to each other. Now I can really leisurely descend on the cabin. I'll drop it down to about 400 feet per minute here. I could even come down even more if I really, really wanted to. But that's perfectly fine, depending on the particular scenario you're in. Let's go ahead and shut off these two. Oh, we don't need the extra heat. The uh, little gas heater there does a perfectly good job on its own. We could actually increase the descent rate one click there. Just kind of give it a little nudge. <laughs> that was not one click that was like an entire handful yikes sorry mr plane and now that we're under 8,000 feet, let me go ahead and reduce one, two, three. We're going to slow us down a little bit here. What we're going to do now is now that we're really starting to get a little bit lower here and kind of enjoying this, we need to really, really start getting our plane down to an altitude where it's going to be a little bit safe. One of the things I notice here is we're about 7,000 feet here. We're about 7,000 feet here. So this is when we'd be going ahead and saying, well, we're about 10 minutes from the destination. Uh, we're going to be there in that much time, 10 minutes, of, uh, seven, let's see, right now we're about 7,000 divided by 10 is about 700 feet per minute so you'd come in here and start playing around with this but as you're playing around with this you suddenly observe that this cabin needle spikes downwards and the reason that it spiked downwards is because the cabin is now the same altitude as everything outside so that's one of those little things that you have to kind of keep in mind when you're planning your descents so that you're better able to kind of play with that rather than really really have to break all those things but other than that enjoy